Welcome and welcome back. On this channel, I talk about overleaf and I'll later introduce videos on MATLAB and Simulink simulations and other electrical and electronics tutorials. If that seems interesting to you, kindly consider subscribing to my channel. Let's get into today's video. In today's video, we are going to learn how to include figures in your LaTeX or overleaf project side by side as shown here. So, on how to include the figures in your Overly for LaTeX project, make sure you watch the first video that I uploaded. I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So, remember to watch up to the end because how to add figures in your LaTeX or Overleaf is right at the end of the video. So, let's get into this video. In order to put this side by side, what you need is uh, to begin figure and end figure with a star here. So you need an asterisk here at begin figure and at end figure. An asterisk will ensure that your figures are put side by side in your columns as shown here where they span through the columns. But if we remove an asterisk from here, you'll see that the figures will come right down one column. So if you want the figures to come just in one column, then you have to remove an asterisk and then you have figures like that. But if you want them to span through the columns, make sure that you put an asterisk. So we do like that. And then when we compile, this is what you get side by side figures. So how do we achieve this? So you begin figure, make sure you have an asterisk. And then this T is basically to tell you that you want LaTeX to place your figures maybe at the top of the page you can put h to show that it should be specifically wherever you want it to be and then you can put b to show that it should be at the bottom but sometimes latex will put it where there is enough space so you have to know how to play around with the t h and b and then here centering you always have to make sure that your figures are centered so you do centering then now these that we have are sub figures because we have figure one so these are sub figures of figure one so you say begin sub figure and then this is 49 percent of the text width so this is 49 percent of the text width you can if you put 50 percent of the text width the figure will be too big and maybe they will come out disorganized so 40 49 percent 48 percent is at least ideal in the sub figure again you make sure that your sub figure is centered so you do centering and then now the command that allows you to include your figure is include graphics in the square brackets you put width equal to text width and then this now is the figure that we've uploaded so this is the figure one that we want to include then the caption this is why you write your caption if you just want it to be figure a as it is then you leave it just like that and then you label so this i labeled it as my figure eight in whichever way you remember so you give it a label and then end sub figure then here h fill just allows you to include space in between these two figures because if we remove this let's try we put a percentage we hide this and then when we compile you see that these are closer to each other so if we include h fill you see that you increase the space in between the two figures so you put h fill to increase the space as you can see there so you do the same to figure b figure c and figure d you write sub figures and label this is the main caption where you write now figure one and then this is the main label for figure one where i've said filters so you can name it as you wish and then here you have end figure with an asterisk like that so when we compile this is what we get the sub figures so what if instead of having figure a b c and d instead of having sub figures we want these figures to have their independent caption where you have figure one figure two figure three figure four what you need to do now is why you have sub figure you replace with mini page so as it is here you see it's the same things all you do is replace with mini page everywhere and then 
when you compile that what you get is the independent figures that are side by side so we had figure one there on top so we had this figure one with sub figures and then we have now figure two figure three figure four and figure five this is just dependent on how you want your figures to be displayed and as we said earlier if you want them to come in one column remove an asterisk and they'll be in one column so now what if we want all these four to span through in the two columns so what you need to do is reduce the percentage here so you can have this so we can roughly say like maybe 24 percent of the text width so everywhere where we have 49 percent we reduce to 24 percent We reduce to 24 percent and then when we compile we expect the figures now to run through the column so they'll go to where there is enough space so as you can see here this is now where you have uh, the figures running through like that so even the these sub figures if we want them to span through the two columns we can still change the percentages here and just say 24 percent on all of them we put 24 percent and then we compile we expect these figures now to have figure a b c and d like that let's go back to the way they were side by side so we just undo okay and then we recompile there and then we have our figures there and uh, here we are so these are the sub figures of figure one and where you need to use sub figures and then for the for individual figures but side by side you use mini page one thing you need to remember is that the aspect ratio for these figures should be the same otherwise they will have different heights and they won't be aligned neatly as seen in the figures here if you're not sure on how to go about adjusting the aspect ratio of your figures you can leave a comment in the comment section and i can do a video on that so this is all for today's video thank you for watching for more videos like this just remember to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you are notified immediately i upload a new video Bye bye